Antifa brat sues Trump supporter she assaulted, judge removes her smile with seven epic words. After brutally assaulting one of President Donald Trump's supporters, a female Antifa leader sued the student whom she attacked in a bid to silence him. However, once the judge heard her case, he issued seven brilliant words that quickly wiped the smile off her entitled face. Like all good fascists, Berkeley Middle School teacher Yvette Vilrica, who leads designated domestic terrorist group Antifa-based faction by any means necessary, BAMN, has spent her fair share in handcuffs for political violence, that is terrorism. Whether punching those who disagree with her or thwarting them from demonstrating their peaceful First Amendment rights, Vilrica's unhinged Nazi-style approach toward conservatives is held and justified by the left as a perfectly reasonable response to thought crimes. Of course, Vilrica knows that while violence and oppression are staples of the left, the most effective way to silence the opposition is by using our own laws and liberties against us. This is exactly why she filed a restraining order in September 2017 against Berkeley College Republicans President Troy Warden despite harassing and assaulting him. Lying that Warden was stalking her at BAM events, the Femi-Nazi was granted a temporary restraining order. Fortunately, Vilrica's manipulation of the judicial system as her own weapon to punish the innocent conservative student leader has backfired in the best possible way. Not only did California Commission Thomas Rash of the Superior Court of Alameda County drop Vilrica's restraining order against Warden, determining that it had not been filed in good faith. He ordered her to pay the conservative student a whopping $11,100 in damages and legal fees, according to campus reform. Rash determined that not only had Philrica obtained a restraining order under false pretenses, she had also intended to use the temporary order to punish Worden for his political views. Worden, who has made numerous appearances on national media in his capacity as a campus reform correspondent to discuss his ongoing battles with the Berkeley administration and who was voted a winner of Campus Reform's 2017 Higher Red Heroes Award, remarked at the time that Florica's frivolous legal actions were meant to intimidate, him, and hinder, his, political activism. Of course, Florica's not through the ringer just yet. The Antifa militant still faces charges from September 26, 2017, for rioting, obstruction, and battery, according to Burke L.A. side. Although the odds were undeniably against Worden and left leaning California, Harmie Dillon, head of the Dillon Law Group, lauded the ruling as a win against the enemies of free speech, adding that Fulrica has a history of filing and dismissing utterly frivolous cases against innocent targets. Philrica and her fellow travelers in BAM, by any means necessary slash Antifa need to learn that the California courts are not their personal plaything to use and abuse at will by filing baseless and vexatious lawsuits, she added, with Worden noting that the restraining order prevented him from exercising his free speech rights on campus. This marks the second time in two months that Florica and her lawyers have been ordered by an area court to pay the attorney fees of their opponents for filing legally and factually unsupported claims in court, Dylan added. True victims of harassment slash stalking slash assault need the courts to be available to them as a priority, not clogged with fabricated claims pursued in bad faith. Breitbart reports that Warden's attorney, Mark Moyser, Vulvica's habit of repressing conservatives with restraining orders has officially come to an end, as she knows her next offense will be even harsher. By ruling that she did not demonstrate good faith in filing the restraining order, the court recognized the frivolous nature of Vulvica's actions, Worden's attorney, Mark Moyser, added. The award of attorney fees should send a strong signal that she cannot abuse the court system to silence speech. Vulvica's illegal routine was simple file an emergency temporary restraining order against a political opponent, which would thwart their ability to demonstrate in areas she occupied, and then not arrive for her court date to present evidence that she requires a permanent restraining order. In Worden's case, Vilorka was granted a temporary restraining order in September and even applied for a permanent order but dropped her pursuit on the day of the October hearing. Just as Vilorka planned. This prevented Warden from exercising his right to protest on campus. Philrica is learning that her Nazi-style tactics don't hold up against our nation's exceptional freedoms. Hopefully, 
she is convicted of her violent political crimes and spends hard time in prison for her treasonous efforts. efforts.